Ken's chart. Unfortunately, Ken couldn't make it today, but I'm going to probably draw this in yellow. And all seek capture pain relief is, is understanding where typical support and resistance um, traders have been caught in their positions. So let me just, um, I'm trying to move this up one second. Move this up. I'm going to do a different color. All right, let me try the yellow, right? So in this example, right, we have, and it probably just off the screen, but we have, can you guys see the, the, the yellow marker, by the way? Yep, 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 yep. Oh, Leonidas for COT data, right. COT, I, I, I kind of stopped COT. And the reason why I stopped COT was because it really wasn't providing that much of an edge to our fundamental analysis. Yeah. So I kind of, I did, I did stop COT, but I do include it. I do include ING's analysis of COT. So there is still COT in there if you want to use it by um, a Dutch bank called uh, ING and they're pretty good. Um, so anyway, CPR, right? Capture pain relief, right? What we're seeing is a typical or typical price action where support becomes resistance, resistance becomes support, yeah? And so what we're looking at is failures in that, in the typical what you know all your youtube instagram traders do yeah and the strategies that they they technical uh, strategies that they uh, that they use we're, we're trying to use them against them yeah because what we know and the way that i was taught yeah by my mentor was in order to make money you have to take money yeah the money is transferred from the loser to the winner and the simple concept of waiting and seeing where your opponent is, is invaluable. So if you didn't know that this was coming, and not many people did know that this uh, this large candlestick here was coming, you know, because of the Bank of Canada um, and their decision today, uh, what do you think is the expected move to the downside? It would have been for price to continue going lower, correct? Everyone would agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. Right. And so once traders get involved in a trade like this, where they get some price action, and first of all, you've got, you've got breakout traders, you've got retracement traders, and you've got level traders. Yeah. Level traders. And they had, they have to trade around levels. Anyways, you've got the breakout trader who would have got involved in that very bearish candle, stop above the high, right? Stop above there, because that's, that's where you have to place your stop, either there or just above there. And then you've got the retracement trader, right? Who are placing their stop losses there, right? And they've seen this nice engulfing candle and traders are getting involved in there, right? Now, none of them has made enough from a risk reward perspective, yeah, to make any really real amount of money. Because if you've had to enter on this candlestick here and that's your risk, price hasn't really moved that far, right? That's an inverse risk reward. Traders at least go for like one-to-ones, right? So they haven't, then I know for a fact that they haven't exited that trade. It's the same thing with these guys, right? These guys, even though some of them might enter here, prices barely went to a one-to-one, -one, barely, yeah? So for me, if that's your risk and you've got a little bit of reward, yeah? These guys are still in their trades. Why would these guys still be in their trades? Because of something called loss aversion bias, right? So first of all, they've been they've committed capital and they've been captured in their position as prices go against them. Why would they be captured? Why wouldn't they just, you know, why wouldn't prices trigger their stop losses? And it's because, as we know, and many of you here um, have done this, is that there's something called loss aversion bias, right? LAB, loss aversion bias. And it's where pain feels worse than gains feel good. And it's just a natural thing, normal human bias, right? We tend to really focus on the pain rather than the good, rather than the, the rather than pleasure. So pain feels worse than gains feel good or pleasure feels good. And it was done by some, it was actually an experiment by some scientists. Um, 
So it's a natural thing that we do, right? And how that manifests itself in, um, in, in trading is that traders don't want to realize the loss. So what they do is they move and remove their stop losses because the pain of losing is just too much. So let's say, for example, they've been on a two or three trade losing streak. Maybe they've over leveraged. They've, you know, risked, you know, 5%, 10% on the trade, right? They don't want to realize this loss. So as prices start to go against them, right? So they've been, they've committed capital and as prices go against them and they start to move their stop up, right? So these guys, the retracement traders whose stop loss was above this uh, resistance level, the, the breakout trader who got in on this breakout, this nice bearish candlestick here, these guys are moving and removing their stop losses because as price goes against them, they don't want to realize the loss. They don't want to. And in the short term, we get emotional as traders. Well, you shouldn't really, but we all do. And we make these repeated mistakes and you remove and remove your stop losses, right? And as you're starting to do that, now you get caught in your position because rather than risking 5% and getting stopped out or 10%, now you're down all the way up here. Maybe you're down 20% or 30% or 50%. Yeah. So now things, you just dug yourself a hole. You're kind of caught in your position. I only really meant to lose 5% of my account on this one trade. Now I'm down 25%. You're hoping and praying. Yeah. That price has come back because the pain. Yeah. So the pain there. Yeah. So it can be captured. As prices go against them, it's more and more and more pain because now you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh. Prices are going to, um, you know, I'm going to blow my account. This is like the third or fourth account I've blown. I put everything I had. I put my children's, you know, school fund in there. I've put my my missus, you know, wedding fund in there. And I cannot realize this loss. Yeah. And the more that prices go against traders, this is the pain that they, they suffer. And this isn't a phenomena for retail traders. This is all traders because... Traders, whether your institution, of course, you have risk managers in institutions, but we know that institutions can trade their way out, right? They have sophisticated uh, or more sophisticated hedging strategies that they can hedge their way out, right? Whereas the retail trader doesn't. But regardless of whether re um, you know institutions and retail are hedging their way out, the point is, is that traders are caught in their positions. And they're feeling a lot of pain. And when you're feeling a lot of pain, the only thing you want is pain relief, right? It's pain relief. And the only relief that you're going to get or some sort of relief is if prices come back down to this area right there. That's it. Because then you can get out for your original loss or somewhere there or thereabouts. The next best trade in the book is what? A break-even trade or a small loss or your original loss, especially if you were down like 50% and you're seeing your unrealized loss, yeah? And you're thinking, oh, my days, I'm going to blow my account. Now, 5% doesn't look so bad, right? So if prices ever come back down here, if you sold, if you went short here, right? And let me just clear this chart up a little bit. If you sold here, yeah, to get short, to exit your trade, you've got to do the opposite thing. You have to buy. So you have to buy order. Yeah. Traders who, new traders who are looking at this level of what? Support, support, resistance. If prices come back down here, are going to do what? What are they going to do? What would you do if you saw that? Buy. That's exactly it. So more buying. So more demand. What is buying is demand, right? Buy orders are demand. And then you've got traders who would have shorted up here, maybe rolled it down, yeah, as to certain areas. Taking take profit areas, ten good take profit areas tend to be areas of support and resistance because you know where price it's, it's known. I, I call it a trouble area, right? Prices have been rejected from there. So you're probably going to take profit there. If prices break through, more traders are going to take profit where around here and if you sold up here then you're the opposite to take profit you have to do what buy to exit it's the opposite yeah so there's so from a technical analysis perspective yeah we understand why there should be more buy orders than sell orders the question you always have to ask yourself at a level is why is there likely to be more sell orders technically 
yeah, not fundamentally, not resentment wise, but technically, yeah, as to why you want to be a buyer or a seller. Yeah. And we know pretty much the actions of all mark technical analysis um, uh, market participants, because pretty much 99.999% you can trade. There's, there's thousands of different strategies out there, but they all get grouped into breakout, retracement, and level traders. I don't, I don't know, I don't know of a strategy and I haven't, I don't know many strategies. I don't know hundreds of strategies, but the point is, is that every strategy that I've ever, you know, uh, I guess looked at um, on YouTube, you know, eight from over seven, eight years ago, all involve support and resistance because that's where the turning points are. So that's where there's going to be a lot of potential liquidity and a lot of trading activity. And this in fact turns into an intraday demand zone this is the, this is what I, I know as an intraday demand zone cpr zones can be obviously you can use them on the daily but intraday demand zones that whole area there is demand from the top of that support support resistance zone all the way down because none of us know where within this zone right where prices are going to turn around uh no worries john no worries no problem it's being recorded so uh, have a good one anyways so, um, so the point is, is that this, and I'm just giving feedback and I just, this was just for educational purposes. I know we've got some new guys in here, but, um, but, uh, Ken's chart. Yeah. For me, this is fantastic. This is what I would class an A1 setup. And it has that added bonus of, um, fundamental analysis. So with the bank of Canada, yeah. Announcing. Bank of Canada announcing that they, well, say not announcing, but first of all, inflation went higher um, and they are reducing their, um, their, 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 their buying of, of bonds, I think it is, or purchases. Um, so that is positive for the, uh, the, um, the Bank of Canada and, and, and I guess the, uh, the Canadian um, uh, currency. And so what you have here also is, if prices come back here, this is now going to be seen as an absolute bargain if the rumor is that they are going to hike rates sooner rather than later. Because anyone who missed out here, all the big institutions that didn't manage to get their orders filled in and around here now know. Yeah, exactly. So oh, there you go. Uh, adequately. Thank you. So they've also upgraded their GDP forecast. So now when you think about the CAD versus the Swiss franc, yeah, Swiss franc, negative interest rates, they're not even close to raising interest rates. They're not even talking about raising interest rates. Yeah. Now this looks like an absolute bargain. If prices ever come back down here, knowing what we know, GDP, inflation, interest rates, everything going in the right direction, this now looks like an absolute, this is what you would, I would class as an A1 setup. This is an A1 for sure. Yeah. So for me, it doesn't get really much, it doesn't get much better than this because you've got the fundamentals behind you. You've clearly got the rest of these other traders who have been caught in their positions. So yeah, this is, this is a, this is a fantastic, uh, trade setup for me i want it to go a bit higher i want it to maybe break another level or so just to add more pain yeah i'm very uh i'm, I'm sadistic like that i just want more pain more pain for them and then i want relief i then i want it to trickle back however it comes back and in the in the time that it comes back yeah don't don't think to yourself, oh, why, why, why is the can Canadian dollar falling? Look at it as this is my opportunity to buy again. Because you know what? The financial institutions are looking at that as their opportunity to buy. They might manipulate prices to come all the way back so that they can actually do more buying at this price point, at this 73, knowing that in the future they want it at, say, for example, 80 in the next, you know, three to six months. This is going to look like an absolute bargain now, unless... You know the, the 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 Swiss National Bank pull a rabbit out of the hat. I can't, or unless obviously there's some sort of risk sentiment or risk off sentiment, or for example, even the can Canadian dollar, let's say, or the Bank of Canada, you know, maybe say something or do something, or maybe there's some really bad news around Canada. 
um, you know, obviously nothing is perfect, right? Anything can happen in this world. But the point is, and as I was saying at the beginning of the video, it's all about probabilities, right? Prob. I won't, be, I won't, I won't try, try and type it out with the, on, on my trackpad, but probabilities, the probabilities of this going in this direction, if it pulls back, is very high considering all the boxes that we're ticking. That's it. We tick so many boxes. We've got value on our side. We've got, you know, risk sentiment on our side. We've got inflation on our side. We've got, you know, everything on our side. So price can do what it wants to do in the short term, medium term, but we have to take these trades. But anyways, brilliant trade set up that. And let's see how that develops. Anyone got any questions on that, by the way?